we what we have here is one of our demo PDGs, so uh, not too big the setup uh, where we have almost every kind of the sensors we have in PDG. And the first point of our agenda is email monitoring, uh, email server, mail server monitoring, and so let's get going with that one. Uh, email is probably one of the most likely or is most likely one of the most important communication tools nowadays and uh, so failures in, in your email sending and receiving capabilities may affect you, your employees and, and of course uh, possibly also your customers and so that's what you want to avoid and uh, that's why email monitoring is the first bit of our presentation today. Actually we found that most of our customers use Exchange, Microsoft Exchange servers for their mail solution and uh, so we'll start with that one. We do have an Exchange server here as an example device and uh, so all the sensors you see here were actually added by the auto discovery so very easy just uh, maybe let PDG run against the IP host name of your Exchange server and uh, PRG will actually do the work of discovering all the necessary sensors. So we'll of course have the uh, basic sensors, CPU load here, memory, disk space, so that's basic stuff but also important of course on an Exchange server. And then the next um, special Exchange monitoring part is are all these here, MS, Exchange and so on sensors. So they all rely on WMI actually and they are very very detailed here so um, as I said you don't need to add these manually PDG will do that in the auto discovery and we'll have for example just a few ones here um, the Microsoft message queue for submission so that's uh, the mailbox here this is actually uh, the displays the current number of submitted messages that are not yet processed by the transport so messages submitted from clients like uh, Microsoft Outlook or maybe Outlook Express to your mail server and that are waiting to be sent out um, to their recipients outside of your organization so actually here that's zero uh, so that's fine obviously that value should be as low as possible zero best of course uh, all the time Another example, for example, messages submitted per second on the mailbox uh, part as well. That indicates the rate uh, that messages are submitted by clients. So again, here that's the part of my uh, Outlook clients may be sending mails to your Exchange server. So we see a little bit of activity here. Um, so that's. Uh, not too much and, and of course that, that probably will go higher uh, sorry we were on that one but that probably will go higher if you have a lot of uh, email activity in your organization it's just a demo set up here so it's not too much there we also have um, the messages delivered for uh, per second for example here that's then the other way around that's uh, the number of messages delivered by the mail server, the exchange server, to the clients um, in a delivery rate of messages per second. So obviously we'll have a little bit more receiving than actually sending going on here. Um, but I think that's all fine. Uh, it's very steadily. Another example where we actually have a recommendation by Microsoft um, what the value should be is this one here, the RPC average latent, uh, latency. This is uh, what Microsoft writes in the MSDN. Um, it's the average latency uh, of RPC remote procedure calls uh, in uh, average for the one with for the last 1,024 packets, and it should be according to Microsoft always less than 50 milliseconds on the average. So with the maximum value we have here is 15 milliseconds. So that should be fine and um, we, we get asked every now and then of course uh, what should I what should I take, uh, pay attention mostly on the sensor and what would be a good threshold and, and it's always hard for us to answer that because um, there are not many recommendations by Microsoft themselves because they, they uh, yeah, made up these counters with Exchange and, and uh, so 
and each exchange server setup is very different in, in actually. So if you're looking for a recommendation, um, the best thing really is to take the sensor name. It's, it's derived from the um, performance counter or WMI class name and uh, just copy it and then throw it into Google. You will definitely end up, uh, end up with a MSDN page where you see, okay, the, the active anonymous user account, for example, means that. And if there is a recommendation, what a good threshold may be to, to be warned about, uh, it should be written there in the MSDN article. Okay. But, uh, of course, not everybody uses Exchange service, so we'll have a few more generic mail sensors there, uh, namely the IMAP POP3 and SMTP sensors. So let's maybe check into the IMAP for, for a second here which actually are of course checking these set services but they are do they do more than uh, just a port check uh, so the IMAP sensor really checks into um, the parent devices IMAP service it is able to do authentication of course it actually is to do uh, is able to do a little bit more we'll get into that a bit later on so it's really not or it's really more than just a port check uh, in addition to that it's just the same with pop3 and uh, also the smtp sensor is able to do more than than just checking if that service is there of course we have authentication again but you can also send an email so from email address to email address the topic and the body of the email can be specified that might be actually a, a tool to do BlackBerry monitoring, if I'm correct. So uh, where you have to send a mail with a topic or, or content, confirm, and then that device responds back. So you could do that with uh, such an SMTP sensor here. Okay. Um, well, that's the first part uh, of email monitoring, but we'll want to take things uh, one step further with what we call the round trip sensors and the round trip sensor is um, a sensor that will send out an email via a specified or a certain SMTP server and check then the specified inbox if the mail actually arrived there and um, I want to take you through the process of adding such a sensor because uh, it may not be the most trivial sensor we have in PewDG and uh, so that, that is a good opportunity to show what you have to do here. So we are, we are looking at an exchange server, it's called Exchanger here. So really the host uh, name is Exchanger, it could be an uh, IP, IP address as well or maybe a public SMTP server, smtp.gmail.com or something like that. So that's the first uh, requirement we have, have a device that is an SMTP server. Then we'll go into adding such a round trip sensor. So um, with 156 sensors, I'll use the, uh, the search function here because that gets me quickly to the sensor I want. And so there we go. So we'll have a, we'll add a SMTP and POP3 round trip sensor here for the example and we'll have it sent from support at passler.com so that's not too hard and we'll use a gmail address here passler round trip at gmail.com the halo ident uh, will be emerge which is the name of the host machine here port smtp that's fine we don't need authentication here but in case you do then add it and enter it here we will need, of course, to check the mailbox. So that's then here, pop.gmail.com. So that's a little typo there. Uh, so this is not related to the parent device the sensor sits to. So just and add and enter the pop inbox or IMAP inbox uh, that is supposed to be checked. Gmail requires port 995. We'll have to use TLS with the Gmail. So enable it and uh, we'll have to supply username and host name and we'll uh, for simplicity's sake we'll copy that here and the password again so just a few um, explanations the timeout for the smtp connection is by default 300 seconds so the sensor will give up trying to send the email if it can't for five minutes and also again the maximum trip time here is also 300 seconds 
and um, all together uh, the scanning interval should of course be higher or at least the same as the maximum trip time so here it's five minutes so uh, you want to you don't want to enter a maximum trip time of 600 seconds uh, for example and and that's about it uh, we'll just save it here and there we have it it will take a few minutes until it has sent the first email then we gather the, the, check the inbox so we'll actually have that prepared here like in any good show and uh, so we, now you see I'm not cheating you it's really the same support at Pesla.com Pesla round trip we'll check the same inbox there and uh, we'll see obviously as it's a local SMPP server sending time is uh, 225 milliseconds so that's quick and then checking time is about six seconds so we'll have a total round trip time of almost six seconds which I think is, is, is quite okay so and of course we see the historic data and we could now check maybe in the 30 days graph here um, oh, we do have a few spikes here it went up to 13 seconds so double the time uh, if it would ramp up uh, and, and always go higher then then of course you could see is it maybe on the receiving sending side and so on you could actually um, do expand that one more step by adding a autoresponder in the Gmail inbox, which then forwards the email back to your Exchange or mail server, and then check the local box again. And that way, you would check uh, or monitor sending and receiving emails. In this example, we'll just do the sending part, but with an autoresponder, you could do both. One final word of caution for these mail trip round trip sensors: um, please use dedicated mailboxes uh, for for these sensors. Uh, so, like we did here with Pesla round trip at gmail.com, um, use something like that. Not an inbox that's also used for for an administrator's normal email uh, daily business. Um, otherwise, that might have an impact on the performance of these sensors. Okay.